Hi guys. Hi. I'm Jackie. Hi. Okay. You want to ask me questions? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Why don't you start from the beginning? How did you wind up here? I wound up here on a road trip from Florida, uh, looking for, I guess, love. And I was following the number 33. I used to wake up every day and every night. At 3.33, it was always 3.33, 3.333. So I kept following the number, and I said, why? Why am I following the number 33? And I spoke to a psychic, and she told me, she told me I have the same birth chart as Jesus. So then I said, okay. I look up Jesus, he was 33 when he came to be. So I was like, that's a 33. My left eye axis is 33. The location I came from in Miami was 33111, the zip code. This zip code here, not the zip, the coordinates on the map, it's 33111. Jacqueline, how did you come to meet the man who is related to your case? Oh, Isaac Ben Shabbat. Um, we met him online. I was looking for my healing angel. The, the psychic I met told me I would meet a healing angel. So I... I was in Utah, Mount Zion, looking for my healing angel. And I... I was at a bar, and I was talking to the bartender about the number three, and I said, so the number three, I told him the story how I got here, just because I got here, the number three. And then he said not, not to say anything, but look behind me. And I look behind him, and there's the giant number three. So I was like, are you my healing angel? And he was like, no, I'm not. And then I said, okay, well, maybe you're going to lead me to my healing angel. So he said, you should probably go to Sedona. It's in Arizona. I said, I never heard of it. And I look up Sedona, Arizona. It's the 33rd most spiritual place. So I cancel my trip. I cancel my trip in Mount Zion, and I decide to go to Arizona. I've never been here. And um, Isaac texted me and he says, have you ever been to Arizona? And I was like, this is really weird. I just decided to come here. And I said, I'm not gonna meet him unless God throws it in my face. So we start talking and I was like, I'm not gonna go there. Then he told me he has my same birthday. So I was like, okay, I have to go meet him because I told God <laughs> that's what I would do. So I go meet him and we have the same birthday our brothers are both named Jacob and David. Our fathers are both Egyptian Jews from Cairo. We're both vegetarians. Then I find out he does stuff for the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea has 33% salt in it. Walt Disney's club is called Club 33. The reason they're called this is because the location of Atlantis is inside the Earth. The coordinates are 33-33. It's the soul of the earth. Jackie, can I get you to respond to some of the charges against you? Oh. Did you break into his home? Um, I'd rather not talk about those things. What about the text messages? I'd rather not talk about those. You said you met him online. Yeah. What site did you meet him on? Luxy. What kind of site is that? Oh, like the most shallow one ever where the rich men meet the pretty girls. And what, um, you know, it's, I know you don't want to talk about the text, mm -hmm. but in some of them, you said some pretty crazy things. Mm -hmm. Would you want to just respond to that part of it? Not right now. Why did you text him 65,000 times? Because it made me find out all my information. Loving him selflessly brought this information because everybody just wants to take. But if you just give and you don't stop giving, even if you don't receive, you all of a sudden receive a lot. Did he tell you to stop contacting him? Uh, I don't want to talk about that. Do did you, you listen to that? I don't want to talk about that. You said, you, did you go on one date with him? Three. 
three days. Can you talk about how you felt when you were with him? Did you feel a spark immediately? Talk about how you felt. I felt like I met my soulmate and everything was just the way it was. And I thought we would just do what everybody else did and we would just like get married and everything would be fine. But that's not what happened. 65,000 text messages. That's like that's next it? level stuff. No. To me, it seemed like more. It seemed like more than 65,000? To me, yeah. That's not Isn't that kind of excessive? Love is an excessive thing. Can you understand why people think this is a little bit out there? Crazy? Oh, yeah. Can you? Are you a crazy person? No. Tell us, who are you? Like, what do you want? I'm the person that discovered love, the equation to light. Einstein discovered the equation to light. It's E equals MC squared. To finish that equation, everything we see is made out of light. Everything and the composition of the light that it's made out of. Jackie, some of those messages don't sound like love. They sound like threats. When you're finding love, not everything is perfect. This was a journey. And I want to apologize because nobody would ever be more sorry. Would you have really hurt him? No. No. I love him. So the rest of the equation is L equals 3.3. .3. L equals 3.3 .3 times E equals MC squared. And that's, that's the equation of eternal love. Did he love you? It means one boy thing plus one girl thing. One, the boy is the light. The light makes the love work really hard. The love, we're as women supposed to worship the men. And they're supposed to lead us in where we're supposed to go. But instead, we all believe in the number zero. The number zero is a belief system that the Illuminati created to create the undertaking of all humankind. Jackie, what? why do you think it, it was important to speak to us today? Because I have to share. Share what? The message of love. What's your message of love? Everybody has to love each other. What do you want the victim, if the victim's watching, what do you want him to know right now? Victim, he's not a victim. Okay, the person that? That I love? Yes. What I want him to know? That I love him. Are you going to leave him alone? If he wants me to. Has he asked you to leave him alone? I don't want to talk about those things. Why did you go to his business on Friday and tell everybody there that you were his wife? I don't want to talk about that. Can we ask why you don't want to talk about some of these? You have things? negative energy. I'm sorry. What are you feeling right now when you hear those questions? They're being negative to me, and I feel like everybody should just be nice. Well, we are trying to understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. It's not negative. You know, so that's why we want to try to understand. On the dollar bill, it says she prefers your undertaking, a new world order in Latin on the one dollar bill. And the pyramid represents slavery, and the third eye is the imagination. So everybody is a Jew, essentially. That's what the imagination is. And the pyramid is how we were enslaved. So we've been enslaved by money, and we enslave each other. It's a, like a self-perpetuating cycle of enslaving each other and taking from each other and being selfish. Jeff, you know, when you tell people that, that you want to bathe in their blood and you want to wear their body parts and, and you don't want to be a murderer, I mean, that's pretty scary stuff. I don't want to talk about that. It's pretty scary stuff. Would you admit that was scary stuff? I don't want to talk about that. Jackie, so love makes you do crazy things now when you've all heard that. Um, would it ever make you capable of killing someone? No. Do you think that some of these messages in your textbook or in your text is negative energy? Mm. Oh, yes, yeah, part of downloads of information. I mean, some of the things you've said to them sound like negative energy. How do you respond to that? I only want to be nice. I only want to be nice. I only want to talk about nice things. If I said something bad, I apologize, and I only want to be nice. I want everybody else to be nice. I want all of you to be nice. I want to be nice. Everybody in the jail should be nice. No, nothing bad would ever happen to anybody if everybody was nice. So in this journey of love that you were taking, I guess this is the last place that you imagined that you'd end up. No. No, if Isaac wants me to go to jail, I should be in jail. That's hard I appreciate it. How, why would you accept that then? Because I love him and he should know better. He's the light, I'm the love. He knows what to do. I follow the rules. If you were released today, would you leave him alone? Yeah. If he asked me to, yeah. But yeah. he has asked you to. Okay.
Where's your journey going to take you now, then? Um, I, you know, I could go back home and spread the message there. You worried about something like this happening again? No, I'm not worried. What have the last 24 hours been like for you being in here? Good. I like everything and everyone. <laughs> was Isaac next to you? you no, <laughs> he's the meanest person I've ever met. Why do you like him? Exactly? We're soulmates. There's one boy and one girl. It's one boy thing, one girl thing. And it equals 3.3. .3. Instead of having the number zero, we're only supposed to count to 3.3. One, two, 3.3. 3.3 is infinity. So if we counted from one boy thing to one girl thing, it would equal forever. Like the universe in all the planets. Why do you say Isaac was mean? Oh, because he was. How? I'm not going to tell everybody about that. I'm not him. <laughs> I'm the love. <laughs> so do you believe that the number 33 led you to Isaac? Yes. How so? I just told you. Why did you go to his house and take a shower? I don't like your energy. I'm sorry. Can I ask the same question? You know, no, I don't want to talk about that either. You guys think that's weird, so why would I want to talk about things that you guys No, we're just trying to understand where you're, you know, where you're coming from. Oh, I follow him. Wherever he goes, I follow him. When you guys were on dates, can you tell us what the dates were like? Um, I don't really want to talk about No. So, but you think he was the one? Yeah. Believe that? He's the one of all light. Now we know the story of light. If he doesn't want to be with me, he's not the one for me, but he's still the story of the light. Like the Holy Grail, I found that in him. Okay. Have you ever found that with anyone else? No. Describe that feeling, that first date that you went with him. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Like I found everything. And I feel like I did. It was just a journey. And now here you guys are. <laughs> Where was your first date? How did you, you know, where'd you go? What'd you do? Uh, we went to Shabbat at his parents' house, and that's what my parents do. My parents do Shabbat, too. Here in, in Arizona? Yeah. How long have you been here in Arizona now? Like five months. Okay. Did you go to Sedona first, mm -hmm. or did you just come straight? Sedona. Mm -hmm. So you've been in Arizona five months? Mm -hmm. I think so. But you've known him for over a year now, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so... Did you? I was traveling around, and I told him, I was in California, I wanted to stay in California. It was while we were still kind of talking, before, because I scared him. So while we were still talking, I told him if he ever blocked me on WhatsApp, that I would come and move here. So he blocked me, so I came here. Why would you not leave him alone if he blocked you? I told him I would come here if he blocked me. So, you so he was testing me. Do you feel like you were trying to force yourself on him? Um, not really, no. I was in California. I was just texting him. And he was listening. No. So your first date was in California? No, here, at his parents' house at Shabbat. Okay, and when was that first date? <sighs> January 19th. Of last year? Yeah. And then when was your second date? The next three days. Okay, and that was also here? Yeah. And that was last year as well? Yeah. And then the third date? I said three days at his house. So you stayed with him for three days? Yeah. What were those three days like for you? Just <laughs> He was being weird to me, and I let it be because I knew I should just let it be. How weird? Why do I, you want me to tell you yeah. weird things about him? Why? Because we want to understand you. He put a GPS on my car, I think. <laughs> he put something on my phone so I couldn't use it. Why do you think he would do that to you? Because he felt the same about me. So he wanted to keep that, that connection, that yeah. keep you. He wasn't used to somebody that would just like stay there because they want to. Did he ask you to leave? When? And when you were staying at his house? No, we just had a three-day date, and he left, and I left. He told me I could stay at his villa in Mexico, but I didn't want to because I knew he would film me on cameras, and I didn't want to. So I thought maybe if I calmed him down over time, he would realize he doesn't have to stalk me. <laughs> when did he 
start to not want to talk to you anymore because he blocked you on WhatsApp, so you came to Arizona, and then I'm just trying to understand what happened after that. I'm not sure. That's why I'm here. Do you want answers from him? What are you, what are you hoping for? Um, I want him to do anything he feels like he should do. So you're not angry with him? No. Oh, my God, no. I love him so much. I just want to love him so much, that's it. And if he doesn't like it, then I'll go home and I'll love my ex-boyfriend. What am I supposed to do? Has he blocked you on anything else? No, he lets me text when he reads all of it. Where's home for you? Um, here. You said you want to go Desert back Ridge. Home. Oh, I call home Miami just because that's where I came from. Would you go back to Miami? I don't, I mean, I would. If he told me to go to Miami, I would. If he doesn't, I mean, if he's not going to say, if he, whatever he wants me to do. Should he be afraid of you? No. No. Did he ever warn you that he was going to call the police if he didn't stop texting? No. Does any of this seem kind of weird at all to you? Um, no. Because in a lot of people's eyes, they see this as weird. Mm -hmm. That's because they're selfish. And they've never actually loved someone without getting anything back. The point of love is to keep giving it. That's the math equation. It's love equals 3.3, .3, which is infinity, times E equals MC squared, which is light. Light is forever. L equals 3. L, if love was a number, it would be 3. So it's infinity times light, which is also infinity. So it's just forward, forever forward. And if you're selfish, you can't understand that because you want something in return. He's not giving me anything in return, and I still love him anyway. That's what love is. That's what the universe is supposed to be made of. When's the last time you talked to him? He sent me a text on a fake number before I went to his work. How do you feel about the fact that he got you arrested? I think it's a good idea. I think it was a good idea. If he thought it was a good idea, that means it's a good idea. Do you think you're in danger? No, no. I, wanted, I think he wanted to make sure I wasn't or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's, you know, you, you carried a knife with you. When? A police report states that you had a butcher knife. What? I never had a butcher knife. I had, I had like little flippy knives on my way, on my road trip. People try to hurt me. I'm a single girl. I drove across America. I don't carry a butcher knife. <laughs> no. How do you know he's the one that texted you on the fake number? Um, just like I know he's the one that set you guys up here. What did he say in that text message? He said, Nolly, are you, this is Carol. Are you coming to finish your prayer? And I was like, please don't tell me that this is you sending me fake text messages because you want me to come over so you could call the police on me again. But I did it. I went there because I knew it was him. He said he was looking for a doctor and a prayer, and I said, nobody else would say that to me but him. So. All right, guys. Go ahead and turn your cameras off. Okay.